Nigerian economy experienced a 4.0% GDP growth in third quarter 2021, with the non-interest finance playing a vital role in supporting the nation's economic recovery and sustainable development. According to the Financial Times, demand for ethical funds has in recent years soared globally as investors in 2022 look to put their money to work in ways that align with their faith. It is important that there are products and opportunities in the market that match their convictions. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of the Islamic Finance Weekly, where we discuss and capture the activities in the non-interest finance market. Our conversation for this episode will focus on ethical funds on economic growth and public goods from a Sharia perspective. Joining me now for the conversation is Dr. Yusuf Adeneye, Senior Lecturer at the University of Malaysia, Kelantin. Good morning, Dr. Yusuf. It is nice to have you on the program this morning. Uh, uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to have me on your show this morning. All right. In Nigeria, the federal government and some state governments have shown interest in funding infrastructure through the capital market. Their securities have recorded interest from investors many times leading to an oversubscription that creates a potential investment opportunity for fund managers. How significant have mutual funds been to the success of these government issues? Once again, thank you for having me on your show this morning. Uh, in, the, in the business world, you cannot talk about investments without talking about uh, mutual funds because uh, the, the, the role of mutual funds is um, this, uh, a vehicle or an, uh, or an avenue whereby uh, invested in. Basically, it is um, an indirect way of investing in equities, money market instruments, and all of that that so what they do is that they pull um a number of securities together whereby um investors come they um they they buy from the unit and you know they try as much as possible to ensure that uh, the the fund perform better than the uh, market index and of course we can talk about the mutual funds without talking about the fund managers so these are investments professionals who have the ideas, who have the strategies, they know the market very well. So when you talk about the significance of the mutual funds to government issuance, uh, you should be talking about the kind of uh, competitive condition and the kind of competitive yields in terms of uh, dividend per share, higher dividend per share that they offer to uh, investors uh, when compared to the retail banking in terms of the interest on, on savings is usually very, very low compared to the uh, yields that are given by uh, by mutual funds. So that is one way the mutual funds uh, have been very effective to uh, government issuance. If you look at, again, um, in terms of regulation, they have uh, less restrictive regulations, and that has been favorable to mutual funds in terms of easy access to capital market, uh, ease of monitoring and all of that. And again, we've seen a lot of um, um, an increasing uh, uh, movement of funds from retail banking to uh, mutual funds uh, in recent time. You see a lot of uh, retail invest investors moving their savings from the conventional uh, banks to mutual funds. And with that, by, uh, with that mutual funds, they have uh, this pool of resources um, in terms of capital to, uh, to invest in the government issuance. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf. Talking about the importance of mutual funds to investment, how can the government take greater advantage of the enormous funds mobilized by the ethical funds in 2022? Of course, when you say ethical funds, et ethical funds itself, uh, these are funds that are um, uh, funds that are based on ethical con considerations. Uh, there are some investors that um, they actually consider some uh, ethical rules before they can invest in any fund. Uh, basically, uh, we find some sin industry like uh, the tobacco industry, um, and we also have the ethical industry where they um, they don't engage in any any uh, less um, any anti-religious act. So we find investors going for ethical funds 
And uh, one way government can um, annex the, the fund in uh, uh, in ethical fund is for them to raise or to issue uh, Sharia compliant instruments like Sukuk. So if they issue Sukuk, uh, what we what we see is that the enormous fund in ethical fund be diverted or can be invested in government uh, government uh, green bonds or government Sukuk. So one way government can try as much as possible to uh, to benefit from these enormous ethical funds is for them to issue um, Sukuk or Sharia compliant instrument. And by so doing, we know that ethical funds will want to go for this uh, uh, this uh, instrument. And capital can be moved from ethical funds then to uh, to to government. And by so doing, they can be able to uh, invest in many. Uh, infrastructure projects, many public uh, public goods projects, instead of going to uh, going for international financing flow that are often that usually often comes with a, uh, what do we say high interest rates, interest rates that are usually compounded. So, if government can look locally, domestically uh, through the ethical funds by issuing uh, uh, sukuk, that would help them a lot in terms of. Uh, reducing the cost of um, implementing and carrying out uh, public projects, infrastructures, and the rest. And of course, uh, another thing government could look at is um, with the increase in um, ethical funds uh, over the years, they could look at it and uh, in the sense that um, investors are now changing as to where they want their uh, capital to be where they want their money to be so they are now changing um, in terms of having some rules and regulation ethical rules and regulation uh so we've 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 seen some investors saying that okay if this company does not um, carry out some environmental practices environmental sustainability practices we are not going to invest in their in their shares so government should be aware that investors are also changing and by by so doing, government can come out with uh, environmental policies. But environmental policies that uh, that address the process of production rather than the waste, rather than the end, uh, end product. What we see over the years is that we see government uh, trying to manage waste rather than trying to manage the input, the process, and the output. So. The whole, the, the, the environmental policies we have over the years have been to manage the waste. But what about the process? That's the, that's the issue. So the process starts from trying to look at these companies, what they do, and you know, bringing in environmental policies would help a lot in terms of trying to look at their, the, the process, what, what they generate out of um, their manufacturing process whether they are increasing the carbon, uh, the CO2 emission and all of that. So with that, government can try to um, reshape the environmental policies that we have in a way that will not only address the end product, which is usually the waste, but the process. Uh, for example, if you look at the environmental performance index, you will you will discover that basically uh, the index uh, is divided into two in terms of uh, environmental health and in terms of ecosystem vitality. When you talk about the environmental health itself, it's uh, it constitutes 40% of environmental performance index. And out of the 40%, waste management itself constitutes just 2% of the 40%. Why? Air, pol air pollution constitutes 20 percent uh we have sanitation and uh, and drinkable water constitute another 15 percent every metals constitute percent. so what we are saying is that instead of focusing on only the waste government should also focus on the air pollution coming from uh industrial sectors so when governments um manage its policies in terms of from the beginning to the end of uh, a production process, then uh, by so doing, they can uh, the environment will, will be ethical, and we have more investors coming to the ethical market. Uh, 
I agree with you, Dr. Yusuf. I would also add that 2021 was an eventful year for the investors as they divert to other avenues such as to cook instruments and Sharia compliance based income. And also, government, regulatory environment, government need to key into the regulatory environment because it still remains paramount for the more growth of the Sukuk instruments and other ethical funds to thrive. So, globally, socially responsible investments exceeded $35 trillion. So, in, in what other ways do you think SRI can promote sustainable growth? Yes, when we say sustainable uh, growth, uh, let's start from uh, socially responsible investment. When we say socially responsible investment, uh, basically we are not just construing the financial perspective, but then we are also construing the environmental and social perspective. So we've seen uh, uh, with, the, with the Paris submission uh, uh, for, for the drive for zero carbon emission, We've seen so many governments now um, enacting laws, corporate laws, uh, in a way to ensure zero carbon emission. And by so doing, we've seen so many corporate firms now uh, investing in uh, socially responsible uh, products and in a project. So, but then what other ways can drive, um, uh, can SRI drive um, economic growth? Government could look at it from a tax uh, policy incentives. Uh, for example, government can look at corporate firms and say, you need to follow some um, environmental criteria, some ethical criteria. So firms that are able to follow this criteria, uh, they, can, um, they can have this tax deductible advantage by the expenses, the money they expended on trying to ensure environmental uh, sustainability are being deducted from uh, taxable income. So through tax policy in incentives, government can, um, we can enhance economic growth uh, through the SRI. Another way is um, looking at uh, uh, social and infrastructural uh, upliftment. Um, of course, investment in local communities. Uh, when we say local communities, communities that uh, do not have access to road, access to uh, uh, public goods and all of that. So investment uh, in such local communities uh, in, in terms of responsible investment. For example, if you look at the north uh, that has uh, enough uh, sunlight and you are talking about renew renewable energy solution, we have so many uh, local communities in the north that they don't have access to power. In fact, they don't even have uh, access to, uh, to 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 the urban urban cities. So when we have in, in, when we have um, re renewable investment, there uh, investment whereby the level of CO CO carbon emission is very very low. What we are trying to do is to what to uh, to um, to increase the standard of living of the people, and of course, um, uh, in terms of human capital. Uh, development index, it will rise over time. And if you open local communities, what happens? There will be uh, financial inclusion because you see banks, uh, banks branches coming to play. And, you know, so through the financial inclusion, definitely economic growth would be enhanced. So by, by providing local communities with uh, uh, socially responsible investment, especially investment that will not contribute to environmental pollution, then we can enhance economic growth. And of course, if you look at uh, the aspect of the investment world, talking about uh, public-private partnership. Now, you see investors looking at a firm, uh, looking at an organization from different perspectives. Uh, they look at organization from the perspective of corporate governance, corporate citizenship, corporate social uh, responsibility investment, and a whole lot of that, meaning that uh, organizations must now live up to the responsibility of not being um, uh, transparent in terms of uh, bring, uh, being uh, their financials being audited by the big four in terms of the Deliot or PricewaterhouseCoopers or you know KPMG. But then they must also uh, involve themselves in social uh, in responsibility activities. And by so doing, you see more investors coming to play. They can say, oh yes, not only that this, this company is making money, 
but is also contributing socially to the environment. So in terms of structured partnership, uh, firms should begin to look at that. So through a structured partnership uh, that uh, firms are looking at, then definitely economic growth can be, uh, can be enhanced. Definitely, Dr. Yusuf, you know, ethical finance takes into account not only financial return, but also environmental, social, and governance factors, that is the ESG factors. So the, the net asset value of Sharia compliant funds rose by 174% in just two years, that is between 2019 and 2021. What do you think is responsible for this astronomical rise? the kind of instruments uh, that have been um, invested in by these uh, Sharia compliant funds, most of the instruments are, are liquid. So when uh, the liquidity of the instrument, Sharia compliant instruments uh, is very, very high. So what you see is that you see more investors, more purchasing power. So over time, what we see is that most of the, uh, most of the investments that the Sharia compliant uh, firms they go into their investment that are short term, so they are investment that quickly that quickly earn returns. So uh, the Sharia compliant uh, firms they try as much as possible to reduce their risk, but at the same time they try as much as possible to increase uh, their 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 funds uh, by ensuring that the kind of instruments they invest in. Uh, instruments that are very, very liquid. Uh, like uh, you look at the Mutroba, you look at the, um, of course, Sukuk is also a good instrument in terms of when you look at uh, its characteristics, but it, uh, it also depends on what kind of uh, Sukuk, whether it is long-term Sukuk or short-term Sukuk. So uh, the liquidity of the instrument issued um, or invested by Sharia compliant funds over time uh, has resulted in, you know, in a good performance. And again, when you when you look at the aspect of the kind of uh, asset classes that uh, Sharia compliant funds uh, go into, then you will say that yes, this uh, this is the reason why they are performing uh, better. We have different cl uh, classes of. Um, assets that we can have in the capital market. Uh, you have the equities, you have the uh, money market in instruments, you have many of them. So, but then when you look at Sharia compliance um, fund, they go into asset classes with low risk. That is, they go into asset classes that are less eat by, by inflation. And returns to the allow investors who key into non-interest investment. Yeah. So, as the year 2022 begins, what will be the likely drivers of activities in the ethical fund space? 2022 in Nigeria, first of all, uh, we should know that we should be preparing for 2023 uh, changing government. And uh, uh, we cannot do without the political, uh, um, this political space. Uh, next year and of course the political space next year would be would trigger some market uh, risk so uh, so many funds will be exposed to uh, to market risk so the first thing we'll be seeing is we might we might likely be seeing increase in management uh, management fee we do know that ethical funds are being managed by fund managers and uh, of course um, investors pay uh, they pay some management fee as well as performance fee. So uh, come next year, um, man, uh, fund managers would want to charge more. Fund managers would want to charge more uh, due, to the, um, uh, due to the expected market risk that they might face, uh, you know. So we might be seeing uh, that next year, increase in man management fees being charged by uh, some, some of this fund. Another thing we shall be seeing is we shall be seeing some uh, investment managers trying to come into the ethical funds uh, due to the performance of the ethical funds in the last uh, few years. So we might be seeing some investment managers. And of course, we might also be seeing uh, more retail uh, investors uh, pulling their capital from uh, the conventional banks to, uh, to ethical funds. So we might be seeing that uh, next year. And of course, 
one thing we are likely to see is that we might see the um, uh, the setup of new ethical funds, younger ethical funds. But the problem is they might face high cost uh, due to the kind of uh, political space we might be uh, we might experience uh, uh, next year. Uh, but basically, uh, or simply put, or in summary, uh, they, they, we should expect um, a rise in. Uh, uh, a management fee being charged by ethical funds, and we should also expect uh, an, uh, a kind of uh, increase in uh, mutual funds uh, uh, through um, uh, uh, retail by uh, retail investors uh, challenging their chap their capital or challenging their money from uh, retail banking to to ethical funds. All right, thank you, Doctor. So indeed, socially responsible investments helps to drive productivity for an economy. And that was Dr. Yusuf Ademeye, senior lecturer at the University of Malaysia, Kelantin. Thank you very much. It was nice having this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. According to Global Banking and Finance Review, ethical funds in a space of decade have outperformed other investment funds as investors are directing their money in more niche ways from faith-based to value-based funds. In 2022, it is expected that the Nigerian non-interest finance market will be positioned better to benefit immensely from the ethical funds in the area of innovative products, sustainable development, infrastructure financing and financial inclusion, amongst other areas. And that will be all for today. Thank you for watching and following this Learning Finance Weekly. See you next week Friday for another episode. Bye.